the future is Interchain. But as a developer, getting your local environment set up for all the deployment scripts, execute scripts, tests you need, and not to mention being able to do this across multiple chains simultaneously can be daunting. Thankfully, we've made it easy with the Axelor Examples GitHub repository. Hello, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Axelor Examples GitHub repository. This is a fantastic repository that's going to make it faster for you to get started building production quality decentralized applications for many blockchains simultaneously. Let's take a look. Today we are going to begin our journey on the Axelor Examples GitHub page as a part of the Axelor Network organization. You can go ahead and click on the code button. We'll copy the Git URL for this repository, and we'll jump over into the terminal and we will clone this. All right, now that it's cloned, we can CD into the folder. And let's go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code and take a look at what we've got inside this repository. Now there's three main things that I want to point out about this repo. Uh, the first is the readme. So you'll find in the root of the directory a fantastic readme that explains everything you need to know to get started with this repository from the setup install instructions and more. The second thing I want to point out is that we've got an examples folder. This has a bunch of really, really useful contracts that solve all sorts of different problems, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. And the third is an examples web folder, which kind of extends some of the contracts that we've written and provides a full front end experience that you can use that is built on React and Next.js. So let's go ahead and run some of these instructions and actually follow along with what it feels like to use the Axler examples repository. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run npm install to pull in all of the dependencies for the repo. Second, we will run build in order to execute all of the hard hat compilation that we need now we'll go ahead and execute all the hard hat compilation we need with npm run build. Next, we actually need some local environment variables. So I'm gonna run npm run setup. This will go ahead and create the environments file for us and give us a random key, which will give us a brand new fresh empty wallet. And from there, we're ready to start our local development environment. The Axler examples repo uses a tool called Axler local dev which is quite a fantastic tool for developers. When you run npm run start, we're actually gonna spin up fake versions of five different blockchains and deploy to all those blockchains all of the same contracts that you're gonna see on the public blockchain. So you're gonna see gas receivers, gateways, constant address deployers, and all the normal things you'd expect to see in a testnet or a mainnet deployment. We're also gonna go ahead and configure your wallet with coins for each of these local test nets. Uh, these are each Ganache instances that you can actually go and interact with via RPC if you wanted to. Now that we have a local environment actually running in one tab, we're gonna open another tab. And now is when we're gonna dive into our examples folder. And so we'll take a look at call contract first. This is the simplest example that exists out here. It's just a simple general message passing example. And it's got two main commands that you're gonna run. You're gonna run a deploy script, which takes the code sample and the Solidity contract and deploys it to all of those local blockchains. And so we'll just tell it to do that on a local environment. And then the next piece we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and execute that in a local environment as well. So we've seen our call contract example has been deployed to all of the five of these blockchains. And now we're calling it on the Avalanche blockchain and sending a message all the way to Phantom. And so you'll see before we execute, the value is blank on Phantom, and then after we execute the value on Phantom is hello Phantom from Avalanche. And so we've been successful at executing this contract and this script. Whenever I'm doing new development, this is actually what I use as my starting point. I know I wanna use GMP, I want the DevOps and the infrastructure supplied by Axler examples to give me a nice hard hat project with deployment, with tests, all those sorts of things. And so what I will most often do is I will pull up the call contract example, copy this folder, update the Solidity contract, update the JavaScript for deployment and execution, and then on my way I go. Let's take a look at the executable sample Solidity code here to really understand this example. In the constructor, we're setting up the gateway and the gas receiver. This is all consistent with a simple GMP example. And then we're gonna see we've got a set remote value function where we are paying for the native gas for the end-to-end -end contract call, and we're calling the gateway and telling it to call contract. And then in the same contract, we're actually implementing the execute method from the Axler executable, and we are taking that value from the payload. 
And you can see all these things being used in our index.js file, where we have a deploy method that deploys to all the appropriate blockchains and an execute method that takes in command line parameters to determine what source chain and message to be passed. And then we can check the value before we set the remote value, set the remote value, and then wait until the remote value has changed and log that value out as well. You can see how these console logs and these awaits can be very helpful to testing and validating that your contract is doing exactly what you want it to do. There's a bunch more very useful examples here. I'll just walk through a couple of them. You can see call contract for general GMP. You can also do call contract with token, where now we're actually distributing some tokens by passing them from one blockchain to another, and then we're passing them out based on the addresses supplied in the payload. You can also see upcoming features like GMP Express, where you want to make an express call, and so you're implementing the express executable instead of the Axlar executable. We can see cross-chain lending, cross-chain tokens, how to use deposit addresses, NFT auctions, NFT linkers, and even things like just simply sending a token via the gateway. Lots of really great command line contracts here that really can help kickstart your development. But now I want to turn my attention over to the other examples folder, the examples web folder, where we've not only supplied a few contracts, but we're also supplying the front end that allows you to interact with those contracts. And so this should look very familiar. This is a Next.js React project. And again, if we look in the readme, we're going to be given all the instructions we need to do this locally. So we've already got our server running. So what we're going to do is we're going to CD into the examples web folder, install the dependencies there. Once those dependencies are installed, we're going to go ahead and run the setup script because our React project needs an environments file in the same way that the overall project folder needs one. We'll deploy the contracts for that exist in our examples web project, and we will run the local development environment, which we'll be able to access in the browser. That is the Next.js local development environment. So let's go ahead and run all these steps one by one. Now we're going to run npm run setup. Setup is done. Perfect. Now let's deploy the contracts. This also includes the hard hat compilation of all those contracts. And lastly, we're going to run the local Next.js environment. So we'll run npm run dev. We'll spin up a server on port 3000 and then expose to us this little React application that we have. So you can see all the components here, all the helpers, and all the pages. So all these are available to you to help you kickstart your development process. Now let's go ahead and load that in the browser. So we're going to open localhost 3000. And we're going to see all of the Axelar web examples here. And so let's go into each one of these and take a look. Send a message to another chain. This is a simple call contract GMP message. So what we can do is we can say, hello world. On a source chain, that's going to be passed via our local blockchain to the destination. And we can hit refresh contract and see that source chain and the message. Pretty simple example. Let's take a look at the next one. We're going to send token to another chain. So let's go ahead and get a recipient address. So we'll just copy one from MetaMask quickly here. These aren't real addresses. This is all happening in my local development environment. And let's go ahead and send 10 of our quite high balance. So we'll set the address and let's go ahead and send it. So we saw that we had zero before and it's taking a theoretical one transfer fee. And so we have nine at the destination. Let's move on to our third example here. Send token with custom logic to another chain. So the custom logic here is that I actually get to specify as many addresses as I want. So we'll just pick a few addresses here. How about five? And then we pick an amount to send. So I'll send. And then we hit send. It will go ahead and use call contract with token to send the 10,000 here. And then on the destination chain as part of the execute with token, it's going to go ahead and distribute those received tokens to all the addresses I passed as part of the payload. And the last example, which looks very simple, but is actually a little bit complex behind the scenes, uh, is the ability to send NFTs between chains. So this is using the NFT linker, where we have an NFT on the Ethereum chain. We're going to hit the send button, and it's going to move all the way over to Avalanche, and then we have a button that will move us back. So obviously, these examples don't cover every use case that you might be looking for, but our hope and our intent is to continue expanding these examples over time and make sure that we're supplying all of the tools you need to move quickly with Axelar. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.